right. Hello, everybody. We are live for the Women Entrepreneurship for Africa Acceleration Program Demo Day. It's lovely to see everybody. Hello. Hi, Liz. <laughs> Hi, CD. Excited to be here. Same here. I cannot wait to hear all of the pitch highlights from all of our entrepreneurs. We're getting lots of love here from the emojis. Um, it's really nice to see everybody. So hello. Thank you so, so, so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Yes, thank you, everyone. I mean, um, everybody, please um, let us know you're here. Use the chat box, you know, send a message, connect and interact with us. Yeah, you have your chat box there. You have your Q&A. So we have our colleague Alberta, who is there um to answer your questions and also you have a uh, little people there at the top where you can see all of the people that are in the session uh so feel free to kind of scroll around uh, and meet each other uh so i think we can move to introductions for those of you that do not know me um my name is elizabeth jones i am the senior program manager for the women entrepreneurship for africa program and i am one of your hosts today Super happy to be here with you all. And I am here today with my colleague, Sidi. Hi, hello everybody. So I am Sidi Saka. I'm the program coordinator for the, this program. And I'm really excited to be here and proud of all of the entrepreneurs that are joining and pitching today. Yeah, we're super excited to have all of you here. I wanna walk you through the agenda really quickly. Um, so I know some of you were already in the fluid open networking space before. Feel free to go back there at any point uh, during this demo part today. So we're going to start with just a little overview of the program for those of you that haven't been going through these three months. I'm going to tell you all about it. Uh, and then we're going to start with uh, welcome words from our partners who are here with us waiting backstage. And then we'll launch right into the pitch highlights. So your first have agriculture one and two. And there's no distinction between one and two. It's just there's two different clusters because there's so many. Uh, consumer products, eco-friendly, education, training, health, marketplaces, and services. And then around 5.20 p.m. CET, we're going to announce the prizes. We have some wonderful prize partners and those companies that are moving on to the next part of this program, which is the growth program. So I'll let CD tell you a little bit about how AirMeet works just really quickly for those of you that are new to the tool. Great. Thank you very much, Liz. I mean, welcome again, everybody. So as you all can see, we've had an incredible um, first experience with the fluid space. So, but on here, you can actually be able to chat on the left-hand side of your screen. You can be able to chat, but also will be, you know, an amazing opportunity to see some of your reactions to the pitch video or some of the things that are being said on stage. Also, another thing that we have very exciting plan for you is the leaderboard. So for you to be the winner of, uh, you know, the leaderboard. So the leaderboard actually captures all of your activities across the platform. So ensure that you set up your profile properly. You set up uh, your attend session, you network with people and have a chance to win some really exciting prizes. Um, another thing that you can actually do, you can schedule a meeting with whoever you want to speak with, you know, look at the person, schedule a meeting, and if they are excited to speak um, with you, they'll, all they have to do is to accept the, um, the meeting and then you, you will have a conversation. To schedule, go to your reception area and click on my schedule to do so. The fluid space, we'll all have actually um, experienced the fluid space just now. It's really, really exciting. All you do is move around using the, the arrow keys on your keyboard and then move around. As soon as you are in close proximity with someone, it will light up a green area and then a video and audio can be activated and you will have a conversation. But also note, you can jump from one room to the other. All you have to do is to click on the room um, section. It will be on your um, right hand side of your screen and then you are able to move from one room to the other. Um, having said that, over to you, Liz. Thanks so much, CD. Yeah, make sure, I mean, AirMeet's such a cool tool. Make sure you take advantage of all the different spaces, opportunities to network and also chat amongst yourselves. Um, now I wanna take a second to just give you an overview of what we've been doing for the past few months. We have 99 amazing entrepreneurs. You can see their faces on that last slide there. We are so inspired by everything that you have been doing for the past three months 
been running a business, many of you are also, you know, uh, running your family and you've been going through a really intense three month long program. So we're super, super, super proud of you and really humbled by you and just excited to be able to present your companies today. So let me give you a bit of a program overview. So the WE4A program um, is actually, we are mandated to run with Safim, the acceleration program. And it's actually a much larger program uh, that's focused on supporting women entrepreneurs in sub-Saharan Africa to help them grow their business, um, expand, and also create additional employment opportunities. Um, so we are part of component three, as I mentioned. Um, so the first part of this program was for 100, not 120, actually 100 female uh, led startups that went through a three month long acceleration program. So it was really intense. We had weekly sessions that were training sessions. Then they met with their EIRs uh, who were meeting with them in peer to peer groups. And they also had one on one sessions with a mentor that was specifically assigned to them. So it was really, really intense. And they've grown a lot in these past three months. And on top of that, all of them are going to receive um, in the end 10,000 euros to help grow their business. So it's really, really super exciting. Um, and at the end of this, yes, lots of hearts. Thank you so much for that. At the end of this uh, demo today, we're actually going to be announcing the companies who are moving to the growth program, which is going to be another three months of growth support. So really companies that are um, moving into the next phase of, of really growth and expansion um, in their business. Uh, so along with CD and I, we had really a huge team behind us, but we have some core team members that I want to highlight. So uh, Harry, who is the head of global partner uh, programs at Seedstars. We had Sangneen, who was our entrepreneur in residence, who really developed a really awesome curriculum for these entrepreneurs. We had Alberta and Kaoni, who are investment analyst leads, um, and Noel, who has our impact and m and lead. So, uh, of course, we had a much larger team behind us, but those were the core people that um, were really, really responsible for putting on this program. So thank you to you guys. We did not do this alone because 99 companies, that means there's a lot of work to do, right, Sini? Yeah, uh, yeah. So we had eight entrepreneurs in residence. So these were actually experts um, that you're going to hear from them a bit later, actually. Uh, who really spent a lot of time week over week working in small groups, these cluster groups that we mentioned. So there are eight cluster groups uh, that were separated by sector. Um, and these entrepreneurs really dedicated a lot of their time uh, spending with the entrepreneurs. We also had 65 mentors that were assigned one-on-one -on -one to meet with, for, with these entrepreneurs for at least 12 hours. We had 44 workshop experts. So that means external experts that came in to deliver a training session. And also we had 50 investors um, that were involved in this program. I think actually a little bit more, um, but our last count was 50 and 39 of those were female investors. So it's really, really, really cool uh, to have these external people here with us. Um, so just wanted to highlight some really cool, interesting program figures. So of these 100, these 99 companies, there were 1,126 jobs supported, and that is actually growing. There are 15 countries that were represented, over 800 hours of mentoring meetings, 67 hours of training per startup. And these companies were running experiments. So experiments to figure out how, what works in their company, how do they grow better? There were 234 of those. Um, then they really set some growth metrics. So they're one metric that matters and they're individual KPIs and they really made some great progress towards success there. Like I said, they were working really hard for three months um, and they've created 165 additional jobs and 69 of those were actually as a result of the program itself. Um, so how do we as Safim measure our, our success? It is by a net promoter score, which is 80.3%, which is actually very, very high. That means that like us, um, the, the people that were involved, the stakeholders that were involved in the program were actually really happy with it. And we are just so happy that you got a lot out of this program. Of course, we could not have done this without our partners and funders. So the Women Entrepreneurship for Africa program is jointly supported by the European Union, the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, and the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's also implemented by not only Safim, but also the Tony Elamelu Foundation and the G German Development Agency, uh, GIZ, through the E4D program. Um, and of course, by us, Safim, for the acceleration portion. So we are actually very fortunate today, and I'm actually going to bring back our speaker to the stage. 
I would like to invite Laura to the stage. Uh, Laura, uh, she is the head of sector for private sector engagement um, at the European Union. She's in charge of public dialogue, raw materials and entrepreneurship for uh, MSMEs. And we're so happy to have you with us today, Laura. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And thank you, everyone. Um, I think we are all very, very happy um, to join this event today uh, with these outstanding uh, female entrepreneurs and also accompanied by, um, by other investors uh, around the table today. So thank you very much for making, uh, from having made it until here and for all what uh, will come um, after today. For the European Union and also for OECPS and for the partners uh, that, are, um, that have the honor of uh, joining this initiative, it's very important um, to support women entrepreneurs. We really believe uh, that women entrepreneurs are at the forefront of uh, contribution to sustainable growth. Um, we've seen just now the numbers that um, Elizabeth has shown in terms of um, employment, um, and beyond that, and not only because uh, because you are creating uh, decent jobs, but also because uh, you are really at the core of um, of uh, the values that we promote in terms of sustainable development goal support. That's why also from the EU, um, in order to further empower women, we have the EU Gender Action Plan uh, number three, uh, so co uh, called Gap Three. Uh, which is the current uh, current policy priority, very important for us. Um, and it mandates that 85% of all new external actions, so all the actions that we do in international cooperation, uh, need to have specific targets on gender equality. So 85%. This program in particular is very important um, as a partnership uh, for the EU. It's a flagship project. We consider it um, uh, as an innovative uh, project and therefore to be copied, to be replicated, to be further supported. It also links to one of the initiatives we have uh, in our relationship with, uh, with the African continent, which is the IYBA, so the Investing in Young Business with Africa, uh, with our partners, the European Union member states. So it's a team European initiative to further support uh, entrepreneurs and in particular women entrepreneurs. So I won't go further than this. The importance of today is for you. Um, and I just want to thank all the partners. So Tony Lemelo Foundation, the JZ, the OECPS, of course, and the BMZ. And Safim, thank you very much for the partnership until here and uh, more to come. And I wish you very much luck. So very good luck uh, for today um, and have a very, very successful event. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Atienza. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it is really a pleasure to have our uh, partners here with us today. Uh, they have really, really busy schedules, and it's really amazing that um, you're here with us today. So I would like to introduce um, our next partner from uh, OSCPS, who is Mr. Cipion Oliveira. He is Assistant Secretary General of Sustainable Economic Transformation and Trade at the Secretariat of OSCPS Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific States. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you very much, Elisa. Thank you very much, Sidi. Uh, for those that do not know what the OECPS is, which I believe is one of the best kept secrets in development, we are the organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific states, and we were created in 1975 through the Georgetown Agreement. Our countries work together with the European Union and other partners with a view of guaranteeing a better life for our people. And this is a very good example on the work that we try to do, helping uh, women entrepreneurs in Africa. Uh, the figures that Elizabeth has presented are, are incredible. We are really proud of you. Uh, this program and the component that Safim is managing uh, is part of a wider strategy that the OECPS and the European Union have put in place to assist private sector because we do believe that it is you, business people, that create jobs, create wealth, and promote real de development. And this is based on several pillars. One is uh, access to finance. Another one is reform of the business climate. Another one is helping informal economies to do the jump. 
and the third one would be the fourth one would be helping intermediary organizations like chambers of commerce and others to try to preach the good word and bring the examples that you will uh, that you will produce through this training and through your work uh, our strategy is based on supporting women led and youth entrepreneurs at the most and uh, trying to foster innovation and competitiveness uh, we also want to share best practices. I myself, I'm from the Caribbean, so I'm looking very much the possibility of exchanging between African, Caribbean, and Pacific companies after what you learn, and maybe that could be done through another framework, but this is something that we are be, will be looking at a lot. Uh, I wanted really to congratulate all the women-led entrepreneurs that have really uh, followed this training. I think it's tough. I myself, I, I have taken courses like this in the past, and I know it's tough to do it. Plus you have a family and you have a, your own business. So I really want to congratulate you. Uh, I think it's for a good cause. We're behind you. The main advice that I would like to give to all of you is to believe in yourselves. Uh, the fact that we come from uh, economically challenged countries is does not mean that our companies are intellectually or competitively challenged. So please do believe in yourself. I, I always recommend that people put a little bit of their own culture and their own personality in the process they sell. Don't be just one out of the bunch. Uh, try to differentiate yourself. When you are in a supermarket, you have to pop out. And uh, by uh, I think that the colors, uh, the, I, I, the iconography as well from our countries is very nice. So I really would like, would love to see your products in supermarkets where I live now, Belgium, or even in my own country, the Dominican Republic. Um, having said this, congratulations to all having survived. A very special thanks to the European Union for assisting us in all of our quests for development. Also to the German Federal Ministry of Cooperation and Development, our partner from many years, GIZ, the Tony Lumelo Foundation that gives us a very special African taste in, in this um, work and we like very much working with them. And definitely Safim, Elizabeth and Sidi that have been a, a real partners in this and we appreciate it a lot. So thank you. Uh, we are very proud of you and we really hope you success to you and your families. Peace and love. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Oliveira Gomez um, and also to um, Ms. Laura Atienza Oresile. I apologize, I totally butchered your last name, but really thank you so much uh, for being here, both of you with us today. Uh, it was a real pleasure. Um, so CD, oh yeah, I'm ready to see some pitch highlights. CD, are you ready for it? Yes, um, absolutely, absolutely ready. I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm actually psyched, um, Liz. Um, I just want to let everybody know that today, um, oops, CD, if you can go back to the other one, pretty please. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so what we're going to be hearing now are uh, pitch highlights separated into those different clusters. Um, so all of you that are here today, you should have gotten an email about an hour before the event started uh, with the timings, more or less, of when these pitch videos are going to be shown. Um, so we encourage everybody to either stay and watch the videos if you want or go back to the uh, fluid networking space and, and, and speak to some people. But we're always going to be here showing uh, the demo pitch videos. And it's a really good opportunity to get a little highlight of what these entrepreneurs have been doing. Um, but also we will share with all of you post events uh, and before the prize announcement, the website where you can find the full version of their three minute pitch video. Um, so without further ado, I am going to launch with the Agriculture One Cluster. All right, CD, I think you need to stop presenting your screen and then I can bring up those videos. Great. Perfect. All right, so. Yeah. So we're very excited. I'm Christoph Kritikos and I'm the EIR of the Agriculture One Cluster. Producing food is a fundamental human activity. The female founders in this group offer farmers a variety of services, be it access to capital, to resources, to education, to information, to customers. However, they all have something in common. Their activities bring tangible on the ground impact to farmers 
And this not only puts food on the table, so to speak, it also promotes employment, economic activity, and growth in rural and underdeveloped areas. Working with them has been a pleasure. They've come a long way. I'm very proud of them. So I truly hope you enjoy their pitches. Welcome to Africa World Initiative, an agrotech platform creating economic empowerment for Africa's poorest people. Have you ever imagined why Africa with so much potential cannot feed itself? Africa remains the poorest continent in the world, with over 490 million people living below the poverty line of $1.9 per day. Africa receives only 3% of the global agricultural fund. Rural poverty is driving people to overcrowded city, leading to forced migration. Over 59 million African children are engaged in economic activities to raise money for their household instead of being in school. The AWA Agritech platform connects farmers to funding, smart solutions, and markets. We need $2.4 million in finance, and so, in finance and support for 200 farmers. We have raised $282,000 in grant group economics fund and founders investment. We are looking for technology and technical partners to improve on our agile business model. My name is Aisha Afo Suleiman, co-founder of Ifum Ghana. However, it's 2022 and 3.4 million people in Ghana are still living in extreme poverty, below 1.9 US dollars per day. This can be traced to the fact that they have inadequate returns from their agricultural activities, stemming from a lack of access to financing, as well as a poor management of the supply chain, which in turn affects the consumers of these agricultural produce. Ifum Ghana has come up with a solution that encompasses all aspects of the agricultural industry, connecting the agri input suppliers to the farmers and the farmers to the local off takers in Ghana and also to the international markets. We're asking for 5,000 US dollars, which will be used for building our technology and technology partnerships, ecosystem engagement, our marketing and branding, commercial partnerships with other organizations, as well as education and sensitization of the farmers. We are Farm Innovation Nigeria Limited, and we help farmers increase their productivity by providing them with a suite of mobile and web-driven solutions. The United Nations says we need to double food production by 2050 to be able to meet global food demand. But unfortunately, in Africa, the food supply is threatened by poor access to markets, lack of access to latest information on good agricultural practices by farmers. Our solution is twofold. One is a mobile driven system designed to help farmers access weather advisory. The second solution is a mobile application designed to help farmers rapidly diagnose livestock diseases in areas where there are poor veterinary services. And so we're asking for $503,000 in exchange for 17% equity. Welcome to Farm on Wheels, where we empower the farmers and feed the nation. My name is Justin, and I'm the founder of Farm on Wheels, a social enterprise that works with smallholder rural farmers in hard to reach communities. Smallholder rural farmers faces a lot of challenges, especially lack of access to farm inputs, credit facility, and post harvest. This enabled us to come up with a comprehensive package of farm inputs services and post-harvest assistance as solution to enable them increase their production capacity yield and income. We are looking to raise 300,000 to install rice processing meal to enable us add a value to our farm produce. Hello, I'm Spene Kadako, founder of Farmer Tribe. Smallholder farmers in large small communities of northern Ghana has to travel extensively to access farm inputs, training, extension service, and markets. This has increased their cost of production by 30%, whilst reducing crop yield by 20%. Farmer Tribe is providing these farmers with timely access to a large variety of quality agricultural inputs progressive farm advisory on demand, and access to premium markets at fair prices. We are looking forward to raise seed funding to automate our operation and expand to two regions in order to serve over 10,000 farmers and reach 
$1.2 million in revenue. On the African continent, one of the major problems we face in the coffee industry is a lack of coffee brands that support coffee experiences for the African consumer and the African palate. Happy Coffee is an indigenous Nigerian coffee brand. Our goal is to create coffee center solutions that support the growth of the Nigerian coffee value chain and national consumption. Several years ago, I met Hawa. Hawa is one of the 64 million smallholder farmers who produce up to 80% of all food consumed in Nigeria, yet cannot afford her basic needs. Because Hawa relies on guesswork for her personal decisions. She has no crop yield and up to 40% in post-harvest losses. We started Kitobu to solve these problems so that Hawa and her lives can end it. We developed a digital platform which enables us to provide smallholder farmers with personalized agronomic advisory, access to market, finance, and storage. We are raising $1 million in grant and equity investments, which will enable us on about 50,000 farmers and create 1,000 new jobs. Now they are farmers in market and which is a farm to market this intermediation platform that is actually renovating Uganda's food retail businesses by enabling food retailers to get produce directly from the farm gates. And this is important to our country and people because of the current long informal food distribution value chain that is actually a stress factor to everyone on the way. I work with a team of young, energetic men and women that are committed to improve the livelihood of fellow Ugandans. Hello everyone, my name is Selma Wawasindi. I'm the founder and managing director of Store to Do. Actually, I have grown up in countryside where I was watching farmers losing their harvests due to post-harvest losses. And later on, I moved to Kigali, where I realized that Kigali household is somehow, are somehow quite busy to the extent of losing them to go for shopping. 40% of agricultural produce are post harvest losses, and 95% of Kigali population live by market purchase. I came up with a solution. I established Store to Door Limited, which is an e commerce platform that provides a reliable supply chain to farmers by linking them with end consumers. The amount that we are trying to raise is $150, which will be allocated in improving transport facilities, cash for improving cash flow operation, marketing, and quality assurance. A sustainable food technology company that makes gluten-free food products processed from edible nuts affordable and accessible to Africans. The current food waste stage within Africa can feed 300 million people. Post-harvest food losses within the continent stands at 4 billion US dollars. Whilst on the trip, I discovered healthy flowers with raw material sourced from Africa. As someone who thrives on providing solutions, I thought to myself that we could replicate what I saw at better prices. We are looking to close a seed round of 500,000 US dollars. This will enable us build a minimum viable product of our digital platform. It will also give us the opportunity to onboard farmers and processors, as well as give them the requisite trainings that they require. Thank you. Hi, everybody. We are back. Hi, CD. You're on mute. Tell us, how did you, how did you like that first pitch highlight session? Yes, it was, it was just incredible. I think with the solution out there at the moment, the food security is almost here, to be honest. Um, fantastic video. 
Um, please, everyone, as you're watching the pitch, please don't forget to interact. Let us know what you think about the pitches. Let us know what you think about the solution. And also, most importantly, if you see a pitch that impressed you, feel free to schedule a meeting with that entrepreneur. Liz, over to you for the next pitch. I'm really Absolutely. excited. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sidi. We are now going to move on to Agriculture 2. Let's see if this works this time. Hello, my name is Fumi Oberlein. I'm a partner at AKBLN Venture Partners, a Lagos-based investment readiness and growth advisory consultancy. As an entrepreneur in residence for Safim, as part of the Women in Entrepreneurship for Africa Acceleration Programme, I was given the opportunity to guide and support 11 female agripreneurs as part of the programme. These women have built businesses from the ground up in some of the most difficult places in the world to do business. And not only are their businesses having a positive impact socially, but also having a positive impact on the environment. They have worked so hard to get to where they are today and to present to you. And I cannot be more proud of them. So please open up your, your minds and your funds for the amazing women in the Agricultural Two Cluster. Thank you. One million Africans die annually due to lifestyle diseases such as obesity leading to hypertension and diabetes. This statistic is proliferated by the use of refined foods such as refined sugar. At Anaya Honey, we produce, market and distribute honey and honey related products, ethically and sustainably sourced from Zimbabwean rural women. We are asking for 50,000 euro and this would be a 12-month run towards capital expenditure, marketing and sales, operations, supply chain development, and new product development. My name is Grace Woji, founder of Woji Farms, found in Uganda. Our business goal is to dominate the market for exotic goat breeds in East Africa. Uganda is characterized by the indigenous breeds of goats that have a slow growth rate. They don't give us enough meat. And the few exotic breeding stock we have in Uganda is so small to fill, fill to solve this problem. We already importing actually fast growth rate and heavier, heavy size boa goats coming from South Africa to Uganda to cross them with our local genes to give us offsprings that can add on weight and can mature faster to give us enough meat. $100,000 to import 100 pure boa, pure boa blood goats from South Africa. Hi, my name is Mikisi Mohamed. I'm the founder and CEO of Ekanje. Ekanje is a CPG retailer selling groceries, vegetables, grains, and toiletries. It, it was established in 2020 because people don't have time to go grocery shopping. When they do, they will have to go to two or more shops to get all the varieties that they need. So at a kind of we make grocery shopping easy, where our customers can order via social media or through USSD and deliver to their doorsteps. We are asking for $50,000 investment. My name is Paula Mohawe, and I'm a co-founder at Expert Border, which is based in Uganda. According to research by the FAO, it is estimated that a third of the food produced globally goes to waste, and this has contribu contributed massively to the carbon emissions in our communities. And in Uganda, where I come from, hundreds of thousands of children go hungry every day. We therefore created a digital platform to fill the, waste, the food waste man management gap with holistic solutions to food excesses, by ensuring that even waste food can be recycled into useful products such as biogas and animal feeds, and also ensure that farmers get value for their produce. So therefore asking for about forty-five to fifty thousand dollars to be able to scale, to improve our technology, improve on infrastructure, improve on marketing, and be able to hire more talents from the team. 
Hello, my name is Anapoka Dazaba, co-founder and team lead for Farmio Limited. Over 60% of industries globally have difficulty sourcing fresh farm produce from African farmers due to a broken value chain, underinvestment, a cake methods of farming, as well as the antics of middlemen that make agriculture in Africa undesirable for farmers and global buyers. Farmio solves this problem by leveraging on web and mobile technologies, precision farming techniques, and circular economy principles to provide affordable greenhouse farming systems that increase productivity by as much as 120%. We are asking for 500,000 US dollars in funding to enable us to construct our 200 unit greenhouse hub on our already acquired 50 acre farmland. This funding will also go into developing our technology and production units, also equipping us with a full-scale processing unit. Hi. Question is, how do we move the over half the Nigerian population that is currently engaged in subsistence and small-scale agricultural practices to commercialization and profitability? $60 billion worth of all food produced annually in Nigeria is lost, not just because of poor storage and inadequate processing facilities, but also because of poor energy access. My name is Adama Abdullahi. I'm an agropreneur and I'm the founder of Farm Seychelles. We're a 100% solar powered food processing company offering services to boarding agribusinesses, farmers, and food producers by helping them process, package, and market their products in a sustainable, affordable and collective manner. We are asking for $100,000 for the expansion of our current facility. Kwanza Kokoa is a multifaceted business combining agriculture and manufacturing. Malawi exports 12 tons of cocoa annually according to the United Nations Comtrade Statistics of 2019. And on our farm, we have two hectares of cocoa which will in turn give us two tons annually of cocoa beans. Kwanza Cocoa is an avenue for value addition of cocoa products in Malawi and for the region. We are currently in our seed and angel investor funding round. Um, this is to complete construction of our manufacturing unit, also upscale on our equipment so that we can get certified and improve our distribution channels and be in almost all retail outlets across the country. We provide convenience by offering quality, hygienically processed, ready to use fruit and vegetable powders and products up to last mile. We provide a complete end-to-end -end solution, sustain raw material sourcing, processing, and serving the customers, either B2B or our B2C customers. What's our key ask? $350,000 to focus on marketing and growth, production, product development, our packaging needs, and then alternative energy, considering how we land, we are on par. The 500 million children in Africa, and one in three of these children suffers from chronic malnutrition. And this is often caused by mothers making poor feeding choices, either due to poverty or even a lack of access to adequate nutrition. So what we're doing at Plan B is that we are putting women at the heart of our value chain so as to increase access to affordable quality nutrition for all children in Africa. So Plan B is founded by um, very passionate entrepreneurs, including myself. I am a child health and nutrition specialist, and I've been relentless about promoting child nutrition in Africa with 15 years of experience in the space. And my co-founder, Nancy, is a finance professional with, with over 10 years experience managing projects in the agriculture value chain in East and Central Africa. Hi, my name is Summer Irene from Cameroon. I'm CEO and founder of When Food Enterprise, and I wish to mitigate infant malnutrition in Africa by 2025. Our vision is to reduce infant malnutrition in Africa by 17.5% in the next five years. We will provide each African child all nutrients needed for growth. Infant malnutrition in Africa is a call for concern. The number of undernourished people rose from 181 million to 222 million within the period of 2010 to 2016. Infant malnutrition 
consumption in Africa is not caused by poverty alone. There is an increasing consumption of cheap processed foods that are high in salt and energy content but low in quality nutrients. We are improving on nutrition in kids by providing each African child with all nutrients needed for growth. Soybeans is very much available in Cameroon and also very rich in nutrients. We are transforming soybeans to soy milk and eventually soy yogurt known as Rivoli soy and the byproduct is used for animal feed. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Helena Taklu. I'm the CEO and founder of Seedwells Ethiopia. Seedwells Ethiopia is a seedwell manufacturer that provides affordable, fast-growing and lightweight seedwells. Seedwells are marble-sized ball of clay, earth, humus or compost and seeds. Seed bombing is the technique of introducing vegetation to the land by throwing or dropping the seedwells. The problem we're trying to solve is deforestation, the backward system of agriculture in Africa, and the low-quality seeds that are being provided by informal seed dealers. Our team, I'm an architect by profession and earth champion for climate change, and our digital marketer has a degree in law as well. Our board of directors is Ashan Nafia Srat, and our advisors are Women Entrepreneurs for Africa and CSO. I mean, that was, that was so <laughs> incredible. Thank you so much uh, for, for that pitch. To everybody that, you know, pitching incredible, incredible work. Um, Liz, before we play the next video or as the next video will be playing, I'd just like to drop a very quick poll on the, um, so respond to a very quick poll and it's, it's a very fun question. Which of these, which of these people are uh, in fact not a funding partner of WE4A. Um, while we answer that poll, we can go to the next page, Liz. How do I see the poll, CD? Is it popping up on everybody's page? Yes, it should. Okay. Already, yes. Everybody can see the poll? Yes. We're testing your knowledge here. We want to know oh. if you are paying attention. <laughs> Great. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. Um, I'm really, really excited. And again, just to remind everybody else, we do have an incredible leaderboard that actually racks up points as you go. So if you want to be the lucky winner of some really amazing prizes, please ensure that you interact um, on the platform. Oops. Are we ready, CD? Let me know. Yes, yes, yes. We are We're ready. ready. Okay. And are we going to show the results of the poll so that people know if they got it right? Um, Maybe. Let's go. Yeah. We'll, see. We'll, see. All right. <laughs> let, let, we'll keep them guessing and waiting. All we'll right. Keep them guessing, yes. <laughs> All right. We're going to launch the next one, everybody, which is consumer products. Hi. I'm Razi Saddam. Entrepreneur in residence within the Women Entrepreneurship for Africa program. For the past few weeks, I've been collaborating with the awesome entrepreneurs of the consumer goods cluster. It's been a journey of a lot of problem solving. We were hacking through growth. We were considering a lots of scenarios of how to grow, how to develop a business, how to actually collect a team. I am very proud of the prog progress the team made so far. It's been a great journey and so many enjoyable sessions and conversations. I'm so proud of the entrepreneurs here, and I'll simply let you discover the awesome projects we have on hand. Enjoy. My name is Ichena Energy, a microbiologist and entrepreneur with over six years' experience in the fruits and vegetable value chain. I am the founder of 5AD Dried Foods. In Nigeria, over 40% of grown foods end as post-harvest losses, equivalent to 9 billion US dollars per annum. 5 a dried fruits is a sustainable fruits waste management solution that adds value to harvested fruits and vegetables by drying and packaging them into snacks. 5 a day dried fruits is in need of 100,000 US dollars to standardize our production facility for distribution and marketing, and also to cover a 12 months operational cost. 
Hi, my name is Fatuna Tamari. I'm a founder and managing director of Afro Investment in Tanzania, the company that helps low income consumers to access affordable and nutritious food from the local crops produced in Tanzania. Do you know Tanzania is among the sub Saharan African countries where the level of malnutrition has been regarded as very high compared to the global rate of malnutrition? And this is because of double burden of malnutrition. Why double burden of malnutrition in Tanzania? It's because of the available local food produce. Uh, in the market, like appropriate nutrition requirement. This is a serious problem. That's why after investment, we are here providing sustainable solution. We process a highly nutritious blended flour from the nutritious local crops. These are about fortified crops which supply sufficient micronutrients which help a baby to grow very well at the early stage. But also we ensure our product access in the market at affordable price, but the different sizes for everyone to afford. We are looking for the investment of $230,000 US dollar to scale our business in production, marketing, distribution, and working capital. More than 50,000 women small scale pineapple producers who depend on farming as their source of income. These growers face a reliable market. On the other hand, there are more than 400 imported and expensive wine brands in the market. Locally produced grape wine are also expensive. That leads to 70% of people consuming 2.4 billion liters of traditional alcoholic beverage that are of low quality, high alcohol content. The company purchases pineapples from these women to make a good quality, affordable pineapple wine under the name of Ava Santiago. We are looking to raise 40,000 US dollars to purchase automatic filtration, filling and labeling machine, advanced lab laboratory equipment, packaging materials. Hi, my name is Angela Izali. I am the founder and CEO of Everjay Foods, which is a value added foods company based in Cote d'Ivoire. And we are on a mission to reinvent African traditional food products by building locally inspired food brands that matters. Many delicious local food products made in Cote d'Ivoire and in Africa in general, don't have packaging or brands that would inspire confidence or pride in customers and enable the export of these products because of the low quality and hygiene. So we decided to innovate our Africans preferred local snacks by developing a range of premium quality, all natural, healthy, plant-based, a handmade snacks with real taste and proper crunch, seasoned with the best flavors around for all occasions. To support that growth, we need um, an investment of $100,000, uh, mainly to buy uh, equipment in order to increase productivity, increase production capacity. There's a high prevalence of non communicable diseases widespread in your country. So much that medical aid societies are on ravaging campaigns to help encourage people to eat healthy and to take in foods that are more wholesome and that are low in sugar. We are value adding bubble fruit juice and green bananas, locally sourced indigenous um, Foods to Zimbabwe to produce foods that are wholesome, foods that have these nutrients and that have a regulated amount of sugar so much that they're suitable for people that are looking for preventative diet or already living with non communicable diseases. We are in our pre seed round of fundraising and we're looking for $300,000, which will be used to build our minimum viable product. My name is Joyce Charima, the CEO and founder of Josmark International Uganda Limited. 50% of children under 5 years suffer from malnutrition in Uganda. 38% of children under 5 are stunted. This means that about 2.3 million young children in Uganda today are chronically malnourished. In addition, 16% of children under 5 are underweight, while 12% of young women who are pregnant are malnourished. JazzMark is addressing malnutrition by promoting the cultivation of pumpkins through a network of vulnerable Ugandan women to improve agriculture and nutrition at the household level. Upon harvest, the pumpkins are processed into more than eight nutritious products. 
pumpkins are nutritious, good source of all vitamins, iron, magnesium, dietary fiber, potassium, copper, zinc, manganese, among others. We are asking for 500,000 US dollars to install an automated production line to help us increase in production. Malnutrition is a huge problem in my immediate community, in my country as a whole, and in Africa in general. KV Nutri Food has come as a solution. KV Nutri Food uses locally grown seed, nuts, horses, and grains that are affordable, that are in abundance in our community to produce affordable and highly nutritive formulas for babies, for toddlers, and even for adults. We are open to discussion in raising funds in partnership and in market. Kimberley is a footwear brand that uses traditional methods and techniques to create leather footwear that is centered around unique designs, thought reproduction, and longevity. Kimberley seeks to eradicate the disposable views of fashion items by creating seasonless leather footwear of lasting qualities that can journey with the wearer from season to season. We are looking to have direct contact with international suppliers and leather tenaries. We're also looking at partnerships with international concepts and retail spaces or stores and potential investors. 77% of Nigerian women use skin lightening products on the quest for beauty. This means that they spend their hard earned money on recognizable and questionable ingredients trying to change their appearance. Little Round Box produces beauty essentials such as bath and body products, hair care products, and fragrances using the purest hand-selected organic ingredients. We are seeking an investment of $50,000 for 10% equity. We are also seeking potential partners in the cosmetic and beauty industry. Nigeria loses 95% of the full value of her cocoa beans when it's exported raw and unprocessed. This means that the $89 million we made from raw cocoa exports in 2021 could have been $1.6 billion if we had added some value, and at least half of that if we had produced only chocolate. This is exactly what we started to do at Lonecraft Chocolate by implementing a simple and sustainable model that constrains our production inputs to be grown and made locally while skipping the output of global standards. We're asking for the sum of $100,000. This would help us buy commercial grade equipment, hire more talent to aid and sustain our growth, acquire the mandatory local and globally recognized certifications, and also to promote our brand both online and offline. Do you know that Nigeria is the second largest tomato producer in Africa and also 14th largest in the world? producing about 1.5 metric tons of tomatoes per annum, but about 45% are lost to post harvest challenges, while consumers pay up to 13 times more during scarcity. We are solving this problem by mapping tomato farmers, leveraging on Google map, collecting excess harvest, processing and packaging in affordable searches for households with low income earners. With 50,000 euro funding, we will set up a central packaging facility Purchase a toner, microwave sterilizer, and employ 14 additional full-time workers, which is enough to help us grow by 150% in the coming year. My name is Angela Kimani. I'm the founder of Ranks Leather. So we are a social enterprise company focused on manufacturing and retail of quality Kenyan leather goods. Our vision is to enrich the leather sector in Kenya and in the region by ensuring that each household owns at least two leather accessories from our company. The opportunity we present is that step one, we provide quality and affordable everyday leather products for the middle income population. And two, we are working on increasing our market penetration through partnerships targeting low income population groups. What we are asking for 
is fifty thousand uh, dollars, and this is from April twenty twenty two. And why is this? Is because our business is based on B two B, and therefore we supply on credit, and we need these resources in order to increase our production and also for working capital. My name is Sarah Kasim, founder of the fashion brand Sarah Kasim from Lagos, Nigeria. Our goal at Sarah Kasim is empowering young African women with the right fit to feel beautiful and confident to win in a well tailored Afrocentric garment while solving the problem of ease and accessibility shopping Afrocentric clothing online. Over the years, one of the things that we've noticed consistently with our Afrocentric women is the problem of poor sizing and fit when shopping Afrocentric clothing online and also low quality fabric, time consuming production process, which is why on launching the Measure You app. Measure You app is a web tool that offers Sarakasim shoppers the easiest way of finding the perfect fit and size when shopping Afrocentric garments from the Sarakasim website. I'm currently asking for $100,000 for marketing and growth operations, delving deep into technology, expanding inventory for Sarakasim to service Africans who are in diaspora, product development through our Measure You app. Hey, good day to you all. My name is Nalvega John. I am the CEO and founder of Veganics, a social enterprise fighting malaria. Growing up, I suffered a lot from malaria almost every week. I missed school a lot. I was bullied and most of my schoolmates thought I had HIV because of my sickly life and my size then. This pain came back when my friend lost her five-year-old daughter to malaria in 2015. And because of this, I decided to turn my painful experience into strength to fight the disease. Still today, according to World Health Organization, malaria remains one of the major global health challenges with over 240 million cases annually. And every two minutes, a child below five years dies of malaria. This problem is remaining high because the mostly affected communities lack awareness about the disease and access to the safe preventive measures. Uganics, we have created a solution that can truly create impact, starting from the core of the problem. We are leveraging on everyday household products like soap that is proven to repel mosquitoes for up to six hours. We are asking for 800,000 US dollars to invest in marketing, to hire new skills, invest on our supply chain, and expand to greater East African countries like Kenya. Incredible, uh, just incredible. You know, I must I must be honest, if I had the courage or the know-how to even craft pitches like this, it would be really, really exciting. Really, really incredible. Thank you everyone for um, participating in the poll. I know some of you had issues um, finding where it is. So just um, as, an, as an FYI, so the poll can be found at the top right-hand side of your screen. And thank you for everyone that actually submitted an answer to the poll. So that poll is now closed and the correct answer is actually Safim, us. So we are not a funding partner, we are an implementing partner. So thank you to everybody that's participated and you know, let's see if we have another poll coming up after this speech, please. Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Bavo and I'm here to introduce the amazing women entrepreneurs building businesses that produce eco-friendly and sustainable products to the environment. The amazing women of the Eco Cluster in the Women for Africa program. Is there anything more important in your lives than your families? And for all the resources you have around you, which of them are important in your homes and during your cooking? Hi everyone, my name is Yvelin Gum. I am the CEO and co-founder of Bleakly. We provide sustainable cooking solutions for African kitchens made entirely from recycled waste materials. Three billion people still cook food using polluting fires. And this causes unhealthy effects on the heart and lungs of cooks. Our solution is a sustainable cooking stove and health-friendly cooking fuel made entirely from recycled metal scraps and recycled biomass waste, respectively. Our financial projections, we are asking 180,000 US dollars on a two-year roadmap that will be help us to recruit more workforce, increase production, 
Operations, Sales, and Marketing. Waste management remains a major challenge in Cameroon, just like in most other developing countries. About 70 to 80 percent of the solid waste generated is actually recycled, but just less than 4 percent is currently recycled. Our solution revolves around the collection of different types of waste materials from different sources and their transformation into eco-friendly consumer goods, such as flower pots made from textile waste and furniture made from waste tires. We look forward to receiving your esteemed support. Thank you. My name is Patu Dangofen, and I am the founder of Close Loop System Ventures. Hello, my name is Alita Jangri, and I am the founder and director of Eco Hustle. We're a social enterprise specialized in sustainable personal care products. And Recycle Moi is my second brand and also Mauritius' first natural and biodegradable sanitary pads. Now coming to period poverty, according to UN, 27% only women on the sub-Saharan Africa has access to proper sanitation. It's an overwhelming number. According to the UNESCO, one out of every 10 girls don't have access to menstrual products. And in some rare scenario where they do, they don't have a way of disposing the menstrual waste. Recycle Moi is the solution. It's at the fruit of two long years of research, innovation, and testing for a sustainable alternative to plastic bag. Our product is made of a bamboo and cone fiber. And what we are asking today is for partnership. 28% of girls in Uganda miss school four to five days every month because they can't afford to buy pads in the market. An average pad costs $12 which is way expensive, more than what the families make here. Good morning. My name is Luis Merathiano. I am the founder and CEO of EcoPads Uganda Limited, a company that makes reusable, affordable, eco-friendly, and organic sanitary pads. Our future is very bright. We're looking for $200,000, and we're going to use this money uh, broken down, uh, you know, acquire raw materials, increase on the production, acquire machinery, increase on personnel, and to, in six months, we'd have reached 25,000 girls. But in 24 months, we'll reach an additional 100,000 girls. In Africa, more than 200,000 agri-food products are created every year. It's enormous, right? However, a large part of these products are strongly to convince local consumers and to position themselves in face of international competition. Why? Because these products are poorly packaged. Our startup has set up a biodegradable packaging production unit to allow entrepreneurs in the agri-food sector to find the appropriate packaging for their product through our online platform, agripack.store. We are asking for a funding of $300,000 to support of growth with local production capacity and new functionalities on our platform, such as artificial intelligence. Hello, my name is Linda Namlusia, co-founder at Kaula Energy Systems. We are creating a last mile distribution software for the technologies. Even though there are many clinical good technologies in the market, they are pretty good. Many users are putting to use other things and cooking experience, but as you can see in the picture, because of the high energy cost, and it's a plan only focused on them that they're able to pay. So at Kaula, we are creating a platform where we are going to connect our users with food cooking. To supply with the crew cooking, and the users are going to pay for the crew cooking with the peers as well. That they get to save on the platform, and the suppliers will get a ready market on the platform. Join us to revolutionize energy access in Africa. Invest in us. We're looking for $350,000 in grant and convertible notes for us to invest, invest majorly in product and team development, and also to scale our other operations to, for us to be able to take clean cooking to many households in Africa. Hello to all of you from Puja Eco Parts. UNESCO estimated that one in 10 African girls will skip school during their molly periods due to lack of sanitary parts. In the case of Cameroon, 
85% of past sold in Cameroon markets are imported from the West. And when they get here, they're already very expensive for girls living in low income families to afford them. So they skip three to five years of school per month and eventually drop out, which is one of the reasons why girls drop out of high school at a much higher rate than boys, causing a cycle of early forced marriages, early pregnancies, illiteracy, prostitution poverty and shame. We manufacture low-cost eco-friendly sanitary parts from banana stem up go waste and also educate girls on menstrual health. We are raising 200,000 US dollars to buy automated machines to produce 100,000 parts a month with a monthly revenue of 151 US dollars, creating 600 jobs in the entire value chain. Libya Green Innovation is a waste, manage, a waste management company committed to solve plastic pollution in Tanzania. Our solutions are the, the innovative ones, including a collection of, collection of waste plastics after the event, as well as humanizing waste pickers, also uh, in using technology to collect data on how much plastic waste is being generated in Tanzania. We are raising 150,000 USD dollars for increasing our collection capacity up to, tw up to 250 tons in a month. Hi, my name is Charlotte Magai. I grew up in Ukuru, one of the biggest slums in Nairobi, and was orphaned at the age of 10 years. At 16, I became a teenage mom and had to drop out of school to figure out a way to fend for myself and my daughter. My very first job was selling charcoal. It was also the only fuel I could afford. So my daughter and I kept suffering from respiratory tract infections. And when she turned two, she suffered a severe burn injury caused by a traditional stove. This sparked my interest in providing better cooking technologies for my community. I founded Mukuru Clean Stoves, a social enterprise that recycles waste metal to manufacture improved cook stoves targeting underserved markets to help mothers keep their children safe, save on fuel consumption, and reduce household air pollution. If only we are able to triple our production capacity and reach 10 new counties. Hi, I Amina mean, is a 17 year old Nigerian girl who dropped out of school because her parents bullied her when she got stained with her period. Traumatized and now married, she has two children. She's not alone on this. Across Africa, several girls miss or drop out of school because they lack access to sanitary pads on a monthly basis. My name is Olivia Onyemobi. I'm the founder and CEO of Paddock Creations Limited. We are a social company in Nigeria that produces Nigeria's first certified reusable sanitary pads as sustainable solution for girls and women. We need $250,000 to help invest 50% of this money in our automation. 96% of businesses are made, of, made up of MSMEs. However, this group of people lack access to quality eco-friendly packaging, suffer flexibility in the ordering process, and face high minimum orders, all of which is causing rising plastic pollution due to single-use packaging waste. Our solution, through our web-based platforms, allows us to aggregate small orders, enabling us to deliver small orders to this group of customers. At Paper Bags by Ibis, we manufacture eco-friendly packaging targeting SMEs in food service, agro, and fashion across West Africa. We make it easy for SMEs to order eco-friendly packaging anywhere, anytime. We're asking 400,000 US to purchase machinery and automate our production process, which will enable us to move into a new factory space, install a paper bag with she line, as well as expand into three countries, Benin, Togo, and Ghana, establishing one flagship store in each of these countries and sign up 50 distributors locally. Over 300,000 tires are discarded daily in Nigeria. 99% of them end on landfill. In a very sad situation, over 40 million Nigerians are unemployed with 65% unemployable due to lack of education and skills. We are solving this problem by providing functional eco furniture made from waste. This has led to the reduction of 10,000 metric tons of waste from landfill and creation of over a thousand jobs. We are asking for $200,000 to fund our customer acquisition strategies and our product expansion. 
This would generate tech to $6 million in two years. Hi, my name is Chomba. I am the co-founder and creative director of Red Button. Red Button is an innovative and sustainability-focused fashion company operating in the $4.7 billion industry in Nigeria alone. We produce high-end apparel with eco-friendly materials, including upcycled industrial and agro-waste, handcrafted fabrics, hand-dyed fabrics, and locally grown cotton for professional women. Our sustainability story revolves around the coastal communities in Lagos where I live. We are faced with the menace of water hyacinths. It's an invasive seaweed that disrupts our biodiversity and economic activities on the waterways. Our management team consists of myself, who is the co-founder and CEO, Godson, who is the Chief Operations and Technology Officer, and Ijiwe, who is our Creative Director. Together we have 30 years experience in fashion design and business. My name is Sarat Awal Umar. I'm the founder of SAU Dakota Agro Allied Venture. My business was founded because in my locality there is there is high rate of unemployment among women coupled with lack of electricity and drought. Our business provides solar cards for women which can provide clean energy which can be used for irrigation and other farm activities, which will ultimately list this to increase number of women farmers and their contribution towards community and national development, thereby decreasing the issue of food insecurity and creating gender balance in Nigeria. How we make our business is by identifying low-income women farmers cooperatives, seeking for their audience, scheduling for a meeting, meeting proposal, qualification contract, and selling this. I'm seeking for 75,000 pounds, which will be used for marketing and branding, research and development, solar pumps, and consultancy services. My name is Jessica, and I'm the founder of the eco friendly project Soleil. How it started? In 2016, we were young nomads, travelers who had issues finding power sources to charge our devices during our outdoor activities. So we created a product called Nomad that we need every day. And today we decided to make it as a project that could be a solution to the lack of power sources that many people would face in Africa. What we noticed today, our consumption, five. 0.90 billion smartphones in the world and 660 million in Africa. But the problem is Sub-Saharan Africa accounts for 75% of the world's population without access to electricity and the excess deficit has increased by 3% in 2019. So what we do, we produce bags, this time in partnership with eco-friendly brands on which we integrate the flexible solar technology and the power management that allow us to charge our smartphone and tablet. What we ask for is 300,000 to cover up a 18 month of operations, including expert recruitment and operational and business development costs and marketing and communication costs. Hello everyone, my name is Rita Dehai. I'm the founder and CEO of EcoPata, a social enterprise making it possible to live waste-free in Nigeria. The waste problem in Nigeria is one that we are all too familiar with, as more than 65% of the households across our cities do not have access to a sustainable waste management infrastructure. This means that more than 90% of the waste that we generate in our homes end up burnt on open dumps or disposed along drainage ways. According to UNICEF, this practice is costing us the lives of more than 100,000 children under the age of five, and also costing us more than 2 billion US dollars worth of revenue for the country annually. In 2018, I decided to be a part of the solution and launched EcoBata. EcoBata has since grown into an integrated platform that is connecting thousands of households across Nigerian cities to eco-friendly options such as recycling. We then allow these users to capture value from their otherwise waste, in effect, keeping this waste from our streets. Behind EcoBata is a team that is passionate, dedicated, and skilled. We've weathered the challenges of launching a social enterprise in Nigeria and are now positioned for scale. Hi, I'm Sandra Olin for the founder of Zenature. 
I once suffered chronic acne that marred my self confidence and esteem, and my dream of being a face model. Now, this is not just about me, but about the billions of people suffering chronic skin issues which can occur at any stage of life with no lasting solution, and most of them have attempted suicide. According to the American Academy of Dermatology, in one year, 50 million people affected by at least six medical treatments worth over $1.2 billion. Let me share a brief story. In August 2018, I was down with breast crisis, thought to be accumulation from using toxic chemical based skincare products, as some of these ingredients have been found carcinogenic and detrimental to human health. In order to stay healthy and alive, I decided to go on natural including my hair. Trying natural ingredients in my kitchen, I found what worked for my skin and that was how Z Nature was born, formulating clean beauty free from harsh and toxic chemicals. We are a team of three with experience and expertise to get the job done. We need $400,000 for marketing and distribution, both local and international, to tenants our revenue production facilities and raw materials to scale our production by 50 times and technology integration to automate our computation process and reduce sales ramp time by 50%. Thank you. Amazing, 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 amazing. Um, yeah, so as we go through the incredible pitches um, that all of you are doing, please, entrepreneurs, make sure you comment your contact details, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your, your website, whatever link that you have on the chat box. The importance of that is we have incredible support system here. People will be interested to look you up, but even friends, right, who, who are so impressed with your work and they would just like to, you know, give it a second eye. I know you are all having fun, so please keep an eye on the leaderboard because at the end of the day, we're going to find out who was the most interesting member of the audience that we have. Um, we'll now move to the next pitch video, Liz. And actually, I want to make another comment that these are only the pitch highlights, right? So you have the full three-minute pitch video of all of these awesome entrepreneurs. I'm dropping the website now in the chat. Don't worry. We'll also send it as a, as a follow-up email to all of the event participants today. Um, but in case you want to see the full pitch video or actually reach out directly to the entrepreneur, there is a contact form on each of their pages and you'll be directly put in touch with them via email and then you can uh, schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings. So definitely encourage everybody to go check out the full link videos. Right. All righty. Now we are ready to move on to education and training. Hello everyone, my name is Deborah ogilvy Burt, and I am the EIR for the Education and Training Cluster. I am really humbled and uh, honoured to be uh, presenting this uh, or introducing this cluster to you today. Um, these women have uh, taught me a thing or two over the last three months, um, most importantly resilience and tenacity and, um, you know, the real impact that we can have if we look to solve um, issues in our communities. Uh, women are the driving force behind most local economies and markets in Africa. And through the WE4A program, I have had the privilege of seeing this firsthand by being given the opportunity to work with, support, and most importantly, learn from the incredible women in my cluster. I really wish them the best of luck today. And uh, I hope that you um, see the incredible value um, and impact that they are creating with their businesses. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Alero Thompson, founder of Tech Fingers, powered by Blue Science Academy. Over the years, I've been working with girls across communities in Nigeria, and I discovered that 8 in 10 girls cannot use a computer. This is a predominant problem in sub-Saharan African countries too. We have 16.7 million girls are out of school and this is why I and my team decided to start training girls in secondary school and also in university so that we can arm these girls with computer literacy skills and presently we are building our online platform so that we'll be able to meet girls in other regions across Nigeria and across other sub-Saharan African countries and this is why we are asking you our admirable investors to invest $335,000 so that we'll be able to meet the needs of of our IT infrastructure, hire new staff, build our learning management system, develop our mobile apps, and also hit our target of raising of meeting 500,000 cost registrations. Hi, I'm Angel from Educate. The world is broken. Hundreds and millions of children don't have access to education due to war or other crisis. At the click, we find this unacceptable. That is why we develop a solution that supplements in presence to online-based learning to help vulnerable communities learn and prosper. We train, we mentor, and we facilitate job access through our search engine. Our goal is to reach 1 million young Africans by 2025. And to reach this goal, we need 100,000 United States dollars. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Bakari. I'm the founder and CEO of Jabling Business Portfolio, a company that is helping startups in Africa to reduce the high rate of failure through a mobile first learning program. We are currently raising 150,000 USD to develop our tech platform, penetrate the African market and develop our local tech hub. We are also seeking valuable networks, remote collaboration to make our content rich and more credible. Now, there's a brain drain in Africa. That's some of the problems that we have identified on employability of African talent. And that's why most of the jobs are outsourced to Asia, to Europe. And that has greatly impacted brain drain in Africa. We are first to market with an intensive, hands-on practical learning experience on key technical skills. But what I know I'm actively asking for is strategic partnership. I'm currently actively looking for co-founders. I'm looking for a CTO or a CEO to support this vision. Our company Lex Apparel is a fashion education company that empowers fashion creatives with vocational skills and industry connections needed to pursue a successful fashion career. After working for over 10 years as a fashion entrepreneur through interactions, research, and surveys, the recurring pain points with our customer base centered around challenges with securing jobs that match skill sets and a lack of a structured system in place to match those with vocational skills to labor needs. The skills gap creates a huge opportunity for Legs Apparel, and our solution is to create a digital fashion skills platform to match skills with the fashion industry needs, and of course, continue to expand our training reach through online and offline platform. We are raising on SAFE, asking for 250,000 USD, and with this funding in the next 18 months, we intend to launch our new products to target 4,000 new users. Hi, my name is Esther Rogendo. I'm the founder and CEO of Quiver Group uh, Limited. It's a company that does training and consultancy in data analysis and visualization. In Kenya, we have 6.6% unemployment rates, and this is partly because of mismatch between educational curricula and the job market demands. Through a research that was done uh, by Brighter Monday in 2018, out of 800,000 graduates that leave our universities every year, 64% of them lack employable skills. The solutions we bring to the market is training, which is in-person trainings and also online trainings. And these uh, we offer to company staff and also individuals. We also offer consultancy services in relation to developing data analysis and visualization tools, doing surveys and evaluations in, um, for organizations and also offering business advisory to our customers. 
we are asking for $100,000 to cover 12 months of course, and this is going to be invested in curriculum development, professional video shooting, marketing, and also supporting operational costs. Hello, everyone. Service Kukambek Academy is a social import enterprise for women and girls. As a newly married woman, I got I have everything going on well with me and my husband until he lost his job. Feeling our pain of bills became very difficult for us. As a trained chef, I started selling food and cakes in the comfort of my home to make money to support my family. In the process of doing this, I met other women who wants to do what I was doing to also make money to support their families, but I don't know how. So I decided to open Service Cook and Bake Academy to train women and girls on culinary art skills so they can make money and support their families. This is our team. My name is Sophia Patrick Atrogo. I have 12 years experience in hospitality, in the hospitality industry. Good day, everyone. Just imagine going for a romantic dinner with your loved one. On getting to the restaurant, you love the ambience, you love the music, and you are already dying to have a fine dining experience. And when the food was served, lo and behold, it was below standard due to the poor quality of cooking of the chef. This is a huge problem in the African culinary space due to the skill gap between the chef and the food business owner. My name is Odogene Onome Matilda. I'm the founder of Stila Culinary Academy, Wari, South South Nigeria, one of the top 10 culinary schools in Africa. We are looking for 80,000 US dollars to help us launch the online platform. That girl should not have gone with a stranger without asking for the family password. These were the words of a seven-year-old girl at a book reading session where I had just told them the story of another girl who was kidnapped from church. I was curious to know how she knew about the family password and she said, I've read your child safety storybook before. This confirmed my theory that children can relate safety lessons derived through fun methods to real life situations. My name is Ugochi Obidiegu and I'm the CEO of The Safety Chick. According to a UNICEF report on developing countries, over 2 million accidents happen in and around the home. The CDC records that accident, also known as injuries, is the leading cause of death in children below 14. My solution to this problem is the gamification of safety content. Each level in our game teaches a simple safety message, uses audiovisual and interactive features, builds critical thinking skills, tests reading and comprehension skills, and uses African characters because representation matters. We are asking for 100,000 euros. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dandera Patricia, the co-founder of Tonzi Skills Training Center. Many micro entrepreneurs in Uganda have lost their businesses due to limited access to financial literacy, basic soft skills, and also the COVID-19 pandemic has greatly contributed to that. Yet, 98% of Uganda's population is represented by micro entrepreneurs. 50% haven't completed high school or attended college. 48% make up the informal market. And yet, majority of these are women who are running businesses out of necessity due to the high levels of poverty not only in Uganda, but also in Africa. Tonsi Skills Training Center is therefore one of Uganda's first digital innovative platforms that trains and mentors micro entrepreneurs through equipping them with soft and entrepreneurial skills suitable for the changing market trends. We are therefore asking for investor connections and partnerships to help us grow our impact. An investment of 50,000 euros will significantly help to redevelop our platforms and scale up and extend our services across Uganda and Africa through, through setting up training centers. Hello, I am Jenny and I am the CEO and co-founder of Tumbu. At Tumbu, we help professionals in the hospitality and event sectors to show what Madagascar has best to offer. I have worked for several years in food sectors, so I know how hard it is to hire skilled staff. Also, we have noticed that most trainings are disconnected from realities of the ground. And the pandemic has pushed many professionals change careers toward the hospitality or event sectors, which are more promising. So they need to upgrade their skills. At Tumbu, we believe that training adapted to Madagascar's context is the key. We provide online, 
on demand and classroom trainings and also customized coaching for restaurants. We are a permanent team of six people, including me as the CEO with 14 years of combined experience in hospitality and consulting. And the CTO and the CMO are both graduated in both fields. We also work with freelance trainers and consultants. Hello everyone, I'm Lilian Nachigosi, founder and CEO of Men's Miles Uganda, a social enterprise providing affordable, sustainable farming solutions to women and youth. Imagine yourself in a situation where you have no access to land to grow crops, neither do you have money to buy food for your family. This is what I and my siblings experienced with left on empty stomachs, and this led to the death of my baby sister, who is up to death. Six out of every 10 people in Uganda are chronically food insecure and have no access to land from culture. The most affected being women and youth who have no land ownership. At Women's Smiles Uganda, we help improve quality of life for our customers through providing training in sustainable vertical farming concepts to women and youth for improved food security and livelihoods. We also set up eco-friendly adjustable vertical farm units that use less space and water for crop production with a particular focus on ecological regeneration. Our vertical farm is a gardener box. This can be placed in any small space that you can think of, and it can accommodate up to 200 variety of plants, such as vegetables like spinach, lettuce, good spices, and fruits like strawberries. We also provide ready market for our customers where they sell the surplus of their fresh produce for income generation purposes and job creation. We also help to train our customers on how to make composite manure. This is the team as I work with uh, we are a team of 18 full-time people experienced in fields of agriculture, finance, accounting, marketing, and of course, engineering. And we are back. Uh, I don't know how you guys are feeling yes. with all these pitches, but I'm so inspired. Yes, I, I mean, it's just really, really incredible. I have a question for you, Liz. Um, Tell me. You know, you, you have worked with this amazing female entrepreneur for the last three months. And how has that been for you? It's been a super amazing experience. Like I mentioned before, I mean, I'm just so inspired that You've gone through such an intense program, right? We've asked a lot from these entrepreneurs in the past three months, and they are always super excited, always super engaged. And I think the most amazing thing is how passionate they are about sharing their story. So we have a community on Slack, and they are constantly sharing their updates with each other. Oops, sorry, there's some construction next door. Um, but they're constantly sharing their updates with each other and trying to make business connections with each other. And I just think it's so cool. It's it's amazing. I mean, just just um, one final question that I have. I'm sorry about the background noise that you are <laughs> you have to battle. No worries, go for it. Yeah. Um. So, what is the most inspiring thing that you have noted running this program? Yeah. So, I think the most inspiring thing is how honest these entrepreneurs have been with themselves. Right. They have come into the program where, you know, I think they were really on the right track and they've said, you know, I didn't realize I needed to track these metrics or I didn't know that I could, you know, acquire customers this way. And I think they've been super honest with themselves and have been super in, engaged. And a lot have mentioned that they're going to go back and re-review the content even afterwards. Um, and I'm just, I, I'm super inspired at how engaged they have been while also running their business at the same time. It's very I mean, cool. it, yeah, I mean, it's just incredible. It's very impactful just being part of this program. Um, so talking about impact, I'm going to publish another a poll. Um, again, please, just as a reminder, the poll is at the top right corner of your screen, right very close to where your schedule is or your messages are. So please feel free to answer this poll as we go to the next page, Liz. Hi everyone, my name is Ruba. I'm entrepreneur in residence for the health cluster within this program. 
For the last three months, I've been working very closely with those wonderful ladies whose projects you're going to listen to. So please pay your fullest attention because they've been working really hard to build their businesses. And they were lucky enough to join this program to learn so much from different mentors, entrepreneurs, and actually from each other. It's been my honor and pleasure to be working with all of them, and I wish them the biggest success they can possibly have. A study conducted by PricewaterhouseCoopers revealed 70% of men in circulation across Africa and other developing parts of the world may be killed. Also in Nigeria, drugs like paracetamol can cost up to 30 times more expensive than in the UK and USA. The Kono said there was a study done by NDFE in which showed drug abuse prevalence is 16%, which is one in every six persons is an addict. Aisha Patient Medicine Store is the only medicine store that leverages technology to give people better access to and current medications through our physical and virtual pharmacy stores. I am pitching for 250000 US to expand our prototype product and expand to other states, neighboring states. Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Nabo Mashami. I'm the founder of Chill Artificial Intelligence Lab. Crises are the leading causes of death among women in Africa. This is because most of the women live away from the health centers, and most of them cannot even afford to pay for these services up front. With a few chronic doctor specialists, chronic diseases become the end of the day. As Chief Artificial Intelligence Lab, we use machine learning power telemedicine chatbot that's accessible through WhatsApp, Facebook, USSD code to extend key chronic screening services to women in Uganda, Tanzania, and of late Kenya, that is e-pharmacy, online consultation, telemedicine services for the disabled. We request for 500,000 US dollars for investment to expand to Kenya, get our chatbot and market massively. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Linda Ngondu and I'm the co-founder of Dialapad. Dialapad is a multifaceted platform that tackles sexual reproductive health care and menstrual hygiene management. The world is currently striving for gender equality and education for all. However, is it being achieved for all women and girls? I dare say no. Kenyan girls are lagging behind as 7 out of 10 school going girls miss up to a week of school every month due to period poverty. To that effect, we have innovated smart sanitary towel dispensers that go to schools, giving the girls access to an interrupted education for they swipe their cards and get a full packet of towels every month. Our ask is as follows, whereby uh, the usage of funds is broken down as such. Hi, my name is Noe Mansara, a co-founder at Dramedic, a digital platform that ensures quick access to essential medical supplies while saving time to save lives. Statistics show that out of every 100,000 women who give birth every day in Uganda, 440 die while giving birth. 17,000 accident victims and 50,000 sickle cell anemic patients die because of this problem. That is why we created Dramedic, a digital platform that enables healthcare providers to easily find medical products like blood, be able to easily order it and have it delivered within 45 minutes in order to address the medical inventory supply and demand gaps within the health sector. We therefore trust that with more funding of about 50,000 to 100,000 US dollars, Dromedic will be able to achieve its mission. Lack of access to adequate healthcare facility and personnel is more glaring in the African continent. One in three people report negative experience of their health care system, according to World Health Organization. The doctor to patient ratio in Nigeria is about four to 10,000. Ours is a virtual clinic that connects patients with doctors for a real time film consultation anytime, anywhere. Hi, I am Aisha Tugarba, the founder of eHealth Clinic. The eHealth 360 clinic offers access to quality, convenient healthcare services via mobile phone, land phone, third party phone, or call center. I am pitching for $250,000.
I'm Asminua Oso, as a founder of Eric Health Services. Our journey began with a personal challenge. As a young female oncology pharmacist, the drugs I work with to save lives were hazardous to my health as I handled them daily. Thus, a passion was born in me to curb the undersupply of protective equipment to health workers in high-risk fields such as cancer, infection prevention, and control. This led to the realization of avoiding the access to an African-based online marketplace and to locally manufactured PPEs for using these high-risk fields. From a quest to secure the best working environment for health workers, Every Health Services was established in 2016. Our services include providing locally manufactured PPEs for the safe handling of hazardous substances and providing training services on the most up-to-date safety practices. We are focused on growing our revenue by 42.4% and we would require 200,000 USD in funding to achieve this. With this, we will convert part-time staff to full-time, employ more production staff and buy raw materials. One hundred and twenty-eight million girls in Africa miss school due to the lack of awareness and the lack of affordable menstrual products. Our vision of Cosmotive is to see a world where every girl and every woman has access to reproductive health information and access to sustainable menstrual hygiene products. So we bridge this gap by producing affordable sanitary pads and providing an information platform. Our Cosmo pads here. It's, it's cost effective, it's super absorbent, and it's breathable. It's 100% clothes made of non toxic soft fabrics that last for two years. And one Cosmo part is equal to 100 disposable parts in usage. We are looking for distribution partners to collaborate in investing in girls' education, women's health, and the planet, one part at a time. In 2019, I was involved in an accident which almost claimed my life. For healing process, I had to get creative with available pillows to help me cushion my bed. And this was because I had difficulties sitting, sleeping, and performing certain activities. Upon research, I realized that there were many people from more walks of life who also suffered the same challenges. For example, pregnant women, nursing mothers, um, accident victims, workers with long sitting hours, and the elderly. And one thing was unique amongst them. The solutions to these challenges were either unavailable, inaccessible, and very expensive. At Macomb, we've been able to make over 700 therapeutic and orthopedic pills to solve the challenges of this target audience. And we've been able to sell these products, nursing and pregnancy pillows, neck rest, back rest, and more through our various partnerships, exhibitions, and through our online solutions. We're asking for 140,000 US dollars to help us improve on our technology, sales and marketing, production, and quality control. We'll also be expanding to various communities in Nigeria, as well as other African countries. At Nital Cares, we have developed a holistic, innovative solution that works across the entire care continuum, including education, prevention, detection, treatment, management, and follow-up to help improve maternal and child health and reduce the risk of maternal death and other adverse prenatal outcomes. First, in order to bridge the healthcare information gap existing in underserved communities, by announcing the power of mobile technology, we deliver life-saving healthcare information to pregnant women and nursing mothers accessible on both basic and smartphones. These messages are sent in their local languages. We understand that some of these women cannot read. So we send these messages to them using voice notes in their local languages. These messages accompany them throughout their pregnancy journey. Now when it's time for child delivery, in order to curb the unhealthy child delivery practices in underserved communities, we have developed a comprehensive delivery kit Carefully furnished by our doctors, it contains 16 WHO recommended supplies that pregnant women require at childbirth to ensure safe and hygienic delivery. We train traditional birth attendants and other frontline health workers on later delivery practices to help boost their capacity so they can carry out safe delivery. To curb the lack of vaccination for children, a mobile application contains an immunization tracker where we track and ensure that mothers present their babies for proper immunization. 
at Optimum Foodie, we're teaching our clients how to eat and enjoy their local meals so that they can lose the weight sustainably. And this way is also more realistic for themselves as well as their families. And we do this through our custom meal plans, our online programs, masterclasses, and our books. We're asking for $50,000 in investment that will go towards marketing, funding the development of our new products, as well as to meet our staffing needs for the planned growth over the next 12 months. During the pandemic, MK and AI Super Hub transitioned to a digital compass that transmit geolocated data of index cases of contagious diseases from rural communities with no doctors to health authorities. I am Okolua Ashimi, the CEO of MK. 693 million Africans living in rural communities with no doctors are at risk of a pandemic every single minute. This is why MK is an important tool as such as I as this. Using an AI decision support tool, we are able to read differential diagnosis for complicated diseases and definitive diagnosis for primary health care diseases. While alerting authorities of contagious diseases that are public health concern. This ensures that every single case gets the support and treatment that it needs. My team and I, including our 250 community health care workers, who are our heroes going to every community to provide care, as well as Wally Sola, our in-house physician, and Mary Lynn, our AI machine learning expert. Hi, my name is Yoko. Did you know that, despite of having clinics and medical centers, 6% of Kamarole district residents still lack access to medical care services? Our solution, Rosanna Old Convoy, is a medical facility that enables clients to access quality medical care services, such as inpatient, outpatient, clinical laboratory, and general medicine services. We are currently looking for $120,000 US dollars in the next 12 months of operation. I'm Moni of Smoothie Express. Smoothie Express is the answer for Nigerians who want healthy meals and beverages on demand, but don't have the desire to prepare it themselves. Since 2015, we have processed about 100,000 orders to over 11,000 Lagosians in Nigeria. We have a laser sharp focus on value and quality, which results in wholesome, nutritious meals. Our future includes packaged foods for increased shelf life and an M Health app to allow customers track their health and fitness goals. The company was founded by myself and my partner, Tracy, and we have over 20 wonderful staff. Hello, my name is Donya and I'm the founder of 360 Psych. I'm a clinical psychologist and a public health professional with over 12 years experience in behavioral research. 360 Psych is a mental health organization that provides mental health services to both individuals and organizations, making use of only experienced and qualified professionals under our platform 247. Now the problem. Mental health challenges is increasing 20 times faster than the population growth in Africa. And the African population is expected to double over the next three decades. Over about 20 to 30 percent of Nigerians struggle with a mental health challenge. And now this doesn't include the 70 percent of people that are going through life stresses that ample well-being and potentials. With this figure, only about one in three persons seek help due to factors such as cost, convenience, availability, and stigma, and that is what we intend to address. Our solution is simple, provide people a digital platform where they can get help anytime, any day, anywhere. Our services are professional mental health services that are ethically sound and culturally sensitive 247. 
We have seven locations in two cities in Nigeria, Lagos and Abuja. We are looking to expand to two additional cities in Nigeria by quarter four, 2022. This is why we are seeking funded support of $40,000 and this is going to be invested in building the mobile application and the standard mind-body holistic center. Where 70% of the population cannot access qualified medical personnel around their homes. And yet, according to Research International, 60% of medical students who graduate each year in Africa being females, but only 20% of them are into medical practice. Because of cultural barriers and taboos, gender biasness and sexism, and lack of support from their families, among others. We have come up with a digital platform that connects the untapped pool of female doctors to underserved communities where they are needed the most. We've therefore launched a mobile e-health app that allows patients with smartphones to download our app, generate a basic profile, and interact with these female doctors online. We are therefore asking for 100,000 US dollars for us to better refine our platform, generate 10,000 online employment opportunities for female physicians, and over 100,000 for non-medical practitioners. Hello, everybody. We are back. Hello. Let me just mute CD here. Looks like we have a, a phantom there. Oh, hi, CD. You're back with us. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yes, I'm back, Liz. It's 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 been incredible, to be honest. Um. Yeah. So before we move on to the next um. To the next slide, I would just like to, you know, close the poll. It's been a fantastic and rather overwhelming response. Well, <laughs> and I think, yeah, we know Africa is the continent of entrepreneurship. So I think that was a pretty obvious poll question. <laughs> there, I know. It's not, <laughs> but hold on. There are people who believe Asia was the correct answer. Uh, but Africa is, in fact, that the correct answer with 92.98% of the continent well 92.8 92.98 percent of all respondents saying it is africa but here is another fun fact Liz. i just found out about two days ago mm -hmm. that botswana actually rank on the mastercard um, foundation um report actually ranked as the top african continent that uh, country sorry that actually supports female entrepreneurship the most. So congratulations oh. to Kaone and uh, all of my friends from Botswana. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, we have a member of our Safim team, Kaone. Many of you know her. She is from Botswana as well, which that's a super cool fact. Um, yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, it makes sense that Africa is the, the continent with the most um, people and working age, right? Because it's a super young and vibrant population. So it, it really makes sense. Um, and I think that's another reason why we're here today is to support female entrepreneurs who are really also many studies have shown kind of the backbone of this entrepreneurial African um, ecosystem. So I think that's yeah. why we're here. Here is something else that I found that out is well that was also very cool. According to the UNESCO survey of 2021, one in every four African female entrepreneur is actually an innovator. So it's actually quite exciting that we are in the presence of greatness today. And you know, I'm extremely proud of the work that all of those female entrepreneurs have put in and incredibly inspired by them. Me too. Oops. Great. Let's move on to the next pitch. Let's do it. So we have two more clusters left. We have our marketplace cluster coming up now and then services. And then after that, we're going to move to the prize announcements and the winner announcements. And I am super to wait for the prize announcement. So please stick around. Stick around with us. Uh, we have some more exciting pitch highlights coming up next with our marketplace cluster. Hi everyone, I'm Marianne, EIR with the Women Entrepreneurs for Africa program. 
I've been fortunate over the past few months to work with some amazing women who have launched their businesses in various industries and are now selling their products all around the world. I'm proud to introduce to you the Marketplace Cluster, and I hope that you will enjoy listening to these young women as much as I enjoy working with them. Thank you, Safi, for giving me the opportunity to be part of this great adventure. Hello, my name is Tosin Lawson, and I am the creative director and founder of African Things. African youth want to connect with their African heritage, but current African designs are usually out of date or of low quality. As a result, Africa is just able to capture about 1% of the global fashion industry, with Nigeria specifically just able to capture 15% of the sub Sahara market. Our solution is African Things, a marketplace platform designed to connect quality producers to customers looking for made in Africa gift items. Our solution is divided into three parts quality production partners, multiple store outlets, and a user friendly e commerce website. African Things seeks to raise $100,000 to grow the business over the next two years. Having been in the commodity supply ecosystem in the last three years, we realized some loopholes in serving quality grains, logistics services, and also storage facilities. More than 60% of our commodity suppliers and aggregators struggle to access market, purchase order finance, reliable logistics services, and storage facilities. On the other end of the, of the ecosystem, agro processors and exporters in sub Saharan Africa struggle to access reliable suppliers and quality commodities. And farmer trade provides solutions that facilitate commodity trade between buyers and suppliers and ensures accurate real time tracking of commodities throughout the supply chain. We are raising currently raising $500,000. Highly gems, we customize home and office furniture, we also refurbish old furniture. I have worked in a furniture company for 18 years and while I was there, I realized that low income earners could not get good quality furniture at affordable price. And the battle of Ivy gems. We decided to leverage on technology to bring solutions to this challenge. Technology, service, and supply chain. We are also going to be one of the first in West Africa to have a refurbished online furniture. We are asking for the fund of $400,000 to develop e-commerce portal and app, working capital to grow operation and logistic infrastructure to hire the best talent. My food shop is an online grocery delivery platform that allows you to shop for fresh and quality food products from the comfort of your home and you get these items delivered to you. Now, our customers are always seeking for reliable hands that will help them shop for quality products always. So we have partnered with small business owners with vendors who produce very good products and but need access to market. An example is this product. We have been their distributor for close to two years. We are we are by helping them make sales why they focus on production. We have other vendors who are also registered with us. Now we're seeking an investment of $150,000 to help us sign on board more vendors, acquire more customers, hire more talent, improve our operations, and build a better web application process to support our growth. Eight out of 10 women-owned businesses in Kenya operate informally, as micro and small businesses. Limited access to markets, education, skills, and training continues to be a barrier for women in business. Nyayo Mamsokos Limited has created a digital marketplace where women in business trade and also access trainings. Our ask today is 70,000 euros in form of grant, of 5% equity, and we're looking to use this money to build a team, automate and digitize our processes and uh, our e-commerce platform and invest in sales and marketing activities. Luxury spa experiences right in the comfort of your own space, anytime and anywhere. 
Now the wellness industry is booming. The global wellness industry is worth $1.9 trillion and the spa segment takes up $110 billion, growing at an average annual rate of 8.7%. The problem is that in Africa, only 2% of the market is attributed. However, we have the fastest and highest growth rate of 14%. Technology is 3% of the industry and growing. Now we have the solution, Unwind by Ariki, premium relaxation at your fingertips, the first ever wellness on demand app on the continent of Africa. It gives you the ability to book a massage therapist at your fingertips. You book on the Unwind app and the Uber of massages delivers a professional therapist and unwind service provider directly to your home, hotel, office, wherever you are. And Unwind takes 40% of the transaction fees. Hello, my name is Grace, the founder at Shangi Organics. A couple of years ago, I had a lumpectomy surgery with a total of six lumps removed from both breasts. That experience made me realize the level of toxic ingredients found in personal care products for people of African descent and the negative impact those products can have on our health. Using my science background, I created some products using locally sourced butters herbs and oils and share them with friends and family. Their mind-blowing feedback led to the birth of Shangi Organics. With this funding received, we would be able to get automated production machines, hire more talent, purchase our raw materials and packaging materials in bulk as that would help us reduce production costs and maintain a healthy profit margin. This is Computer Village the largest market for everything gadgets in Nigeria, generating $6.3 million in revenue every day. Gadget consumers in Nigeria today consider Computer Village the place to go for anything gadgets. My experience working in the market for the past six years enabled me to observe a high level of consumer mistrust in the market. A typical gadget consumer is forced to deal with issues of fraud and safety, inferior quality, and lack of transparency. If nothing is done, over 100 million new gadget owners will experience a similar problem. This is why there's a need for an innovative disruption in order to reestablish trust. Source My Gadget is here to bring about that disruption using technology. My name is Ekemena Emelereta, and I'm the founder and CEO of Source My Gadgets, a curated marketplace designed to rebuild gadget consumer trust with personalized services and a focus on quality. Our unique offerings are personalized services, a quality first marketplace, and similar shopping experience. Our team consists of 10 dedicated individuals, 50% of which are women, and our skill sets cut across operations, growth, and technology. We are seeking $200,000 in investment at a $3, billion, $3 million valuation cap. We intend to use these funds to upgrade our technology, scale our operations, and customer acquisition. She has a three-year-old and a three-month-old. She works a tight schedule in a bank and constantly struggles to juggle work and family. Her name is Ada. She has three kids. She sells baby and kids items. She can only sell her goods in the open market because she's a digital illiterate. She's out from dawn to dusk and struggles daily to make enough money. That is Bola. I am Ola Emi Ido, co-founder of Everything Kids. Everything Kids is an online marketplace for baby and kids items. We make shopping and parenting easy for millions of mothers and selling easier for thousands of traders. Oh, our team consists of myself. I'm from an entrepreneurial family. I started a business at early as I was eight years old. I'm a content engineer graduate with six years work experience. And I'm a alumni of Lagos Business School, Faith Foundation and Founders Institute. I'm a Tony Olimelio and an entrepreneur. I'm an ex-scholar, Charlie Bear Foundation mentee. I have a patent in a baby product and I founded Tender Plus Kids Fashion, which has been in operation for the past five years. I was a vendor at Jumia and Conga for six years with the Best Performing Vendor Award in 2018. My co-founder, Yinka Daramola, is a computer engineering graduate as well. He has an MBA from London Business School. He's a chartered accountant. He's an ex city Bank Vice President and ex CIO at EcoBank. He's the founder at Google Consulting at Ruby's Digital Bank, University and Advertise. Hi, my name is Abai Schultz, and I am the founder and creative director of ZAF. 
Zaf is a collection of luxury lifestyle brands that is 100% made in Africa. There is an abundance of raw materials across the continent, but oftentimes these valuable resources are exported to other parts of the world. So we are looking for investors who can add value to the brand, to the company beyond financial investment. Uh, we want to raise $500,000 and this fund will go to expand the production and open 10 bricks and mortar shops in the US and possibly in major African airports in the next five years. Hello again, we are back, 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 and I have some background noise behind me. I apologize for that. Yes, fantastic. Oh my God, it almost feels like I don't want any, any of this to end. I'm having so much fun. It's, it's just incredible. Um, just as a reminder, everyone, so on the chat box, again, as, you, as we go through this incredibly beautiful um, videos, um, you know, really, really amazing stories, please ensure that you post, you make posts, you share, you like, whatever you have to do, entrepreneurs, ensure that you share all of the, the links where people can look you up, schedule a call with you. And everyone else, please ensure that you go to my schedule, you know, create a schedule, have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with people, have an opportunity to get to know people, but also ensure that you enjoy the moments. It's, it's very important that we do that, Liz. No, I totally agree. And I was thinking back to a question you asked me a little while ago, CD. Um, and I just wanted to come back to what is the thing that's most impressing to me because uh, I have two answers. I have a new one. I think all of, as I'm watching these pitches, the thing that strikes me the most is these are all real life issues, right? All of these entrepreneurs created their business because they saw a hole in the market or they saw a problem that really affected them and they went out and did something about it. Of course, everybody has ideas every day, but it takes so much gumption and just power to go out there and take the first step. And I think Actually, that's what's the most inspiring thing to me about all of these entrepreneurs. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. When you look at the pitches, so the reason why I mention, I intentionally say videos is because for me, it's, it's it appears like this one beautiful bulk of story that I am able to relate with from, you know, sicknesses to different things that is happening in the continent. It's incredibly important that entrepreneurs you know solve issues like this and who better than any to do this than the women in africa i mean they are the africa the future of our continent is female and i'm incredibly proud of the solution that we're seeing here today liz me too city me too i think let's uh go to the last but most definitely not least uh sector the services cluster what do you think Yes, I mean, I'm ready, I'm psyched. And yeah. everyone else, please ensure that you stick around. The most important part of the program is coming up with prices. I mean, who doesn't like prices, right? <laughs> I love prices. I, I wish I could have um, have a price today, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Is what it is. Instead, we get to give out the prizes. So without further ado, the services cluster, and then we'll get to those prizes, CD. Yep. Hi, my name is Desiree Dosh. I'm the entrepreneur in residence for the service cluster startups of the Women Entrepreneurship for African program. It was a great pleasure to guide the founders through the program and to see them grow and evolve personally and professionally on a daily basis. I wish all of them great success and all the best for their entrepreneurial future. Thank you very much. Hello. Did you know that over 70% of youth in Uganda are currently unemployed? My name is Rachel and I'm the co-founder of Abilebaling a TikTok platform where we currently connect youth to social and economic empowerment opportunities. And I learned from my personal experience that in my country, Uganda, 
getting a job can be very difficult, very frustrating, and very disappointing, even when you have very good grades. And actually, in my country, Uganda, over 400,000 youths graduate from universities and colleges every year in the hope of getting jobs, yet there are only approximately 9,000 available jobs. So this leaves a wide unemployment gap where over 21 million youth are currently unemployed. So that is the reason why we created this digital platform where we currently connect these youth to social and economic empowerment opportunities that later on improve on their livelihood. And we are also looking for 50,000 US dollars to help us redevelop our platform and change the lives of over 100,000 youths. Hello, I'm Otans Amlamo from Mini and co-founder of AfriStarsum. In Africa, startups develop good solutions to solve problems, but they lack competencies and misfounding opportunities. The world best that 700,000 startups disappear in Africa every year. We have a solution. AfriStarsum is a one-stop app for the startup ecosystem. A free startup is an online crowdfunding platform for startup and entrepreneurs. In five years, we aim to launch in our bank, a bank of microfunding structure for startup and entrepreneurs in the region. Hello everyone, my name is Sel and I'm a full stack web developer. I'm also the founder of Data Girl Technologies, which is an edtech startup based in Cameroon. We teach girls how to code and then we link the girls up with opportunities. Before I continue, who do you think shops more? Is it men or is it women? Uh, it is no longer surprising. It is actually a fact that there are many more male software developers than female software developers around the world. Just two out of every 10 uh, software developers are women. Our solution is therefore a full stack web development bootcamp, which is supposed to help, which teaches the girls how to code uh, in front end, back end, and also teaches them how to use version control so that they can collaborate remotely. Our present needs are partnerships uh, that will partner with data get technologies to offer internships, job placements, and collaborations. Uh, we also require a sum of forty thousand um, dollars to be able to increase our capacity. We can retailers can offer instant protection and fast pick and repair delivery to their customers. Consumers can also instantly protect their devices at a request through our website. GAMP is asking for intros to device manufacturers, and we are also asking for fund to drive sales, marketing, and partnerships in Nigeria and across Africa. Have you ever had a million dollar idea, but didn't know where to start? Well, join the club. Many African SMEs lack engineering and product development support to bring their ideas to market. Where these services exist, they're either scarce, expensive, or limited to specific services. We are digitizing the product development process using 3D modeling and printing and an online platform to automate the review of part files and quotes. Going forward, we're seeking $100,000 in support to expand our machine shop and innovation center, as well as our machining capabilities. We also plan to complete the upgrades to our online platform to ensure efficiency in our process. Over 60% of Nigerian women who live in poverty cannot access funding for their business because their attempt is high risk. These women resort to using loan sharks who charge them high interest rates. To help these women, we created a simple to use web and Android application for them to request for funding easily from us. Women who do not have access to a smartphone can request for funding through our women leaders in their communities. We are asking for $500,000, 20% will go into growing our tech team, another 20% going to upgrading our current mobile application, then 20% goes into marketing and communication, and the last 40% will be used to grow our loan book.
Mal Malagasy people live in a beautiful country while they misunderstand the tourist product of their own country. At the same time, they can't afford the offers proposed by the classic tour operator. That is why on 2019, I created Marudia. It is a tour operator, an eco-responsible tour operator that promotes domestic tourism in Madagascar and in extension to the continent. We, we are asked to establish collaborations with tour operators abroad, uh, sending tour, tourists in Madagascar or vice versa. Over here, we have a depiction of the famous game Tug of War. However, this is the reality of so many Africans who are constantly in the dilemma of saving or spending. Managing money is hard. And we know this over here at my stash. Many Africans either do not save at all, or the little they save is rapidly losing value due to currency inflation. For some things at my stash, to our flagship products, which offers passive recurring savings, where users are able to save as they spend or earn for every transaction. So we tell them it's like paying tax to yourself. We also offer high interest rates and best of all, micro USD savings to hedge against currency inflation. We're currently raising funds for $850,000 that will enable us to achieve over $2.4 million in user savings, 50,000 users at over 800,000 saving transactions. This money will be used to develop the products, operational costs, and also to acquire users. Hello, my name is Farid Adamo. I am the founder of Research RNG, an intelligence platform that allows you to turn public information into useful or actionable insights for your organization. I noticed that there is the challenge of collecting data for interventions, for projects, um, and that there was the challenge as well of balancing that data with people, sort of providing human context to the information, and that there was a shortage of professionals within the field to sort of carry out the data mapping or the ground routine exercises, you know, to obtain data for these particular projects. We're currently a team of three people. Um, Adekemi manages our operations and research and just keeps uh, structure and helps us manage people daily. Uh, Afalabi is a international development expert who also is a writer, so he sits on our content and research text. Our solution is a web-based e-hub that enables prospective tenants to communicate with landlords over a single digital platform. This includes features such as real-time communication, automatic SMS email alerts to and from the landlord and tenants, maintenance ticketing, inspection features, as well as a payment gateway. Our team consists of myself as well as my West African partner, who is a co-founder as well as the CEO of Berkeley Properties. We're both in the property and facilities management space as well as property development. We did it. Yes, we did. We did. Congratulations to us, Liz. <laughs> I would say congratulations to us and also these fabulous entrepreneurs that we just watched for the past hour-ish and more. I am leaving here feeling super energized and now I want to start my own company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Um, you know, just before we go to the prices and before we start making an announce the announcement for the prices, Liz, I'm going to insist that Everybody who is on here with us, watching us, I want to be sure that you are all as excited as we are. So without, without further ado, before we move to prices, give us like celebration emojis or whatnot. Yeah, so we know that you're excited to move on to, oh yeah, 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 yeah there, there we go. There are all of the, all of the emojis, all of the excitement. I mean, to be honest, I know all of the entrepreneurs are excited. I know our partners that are here with us are excited. Um, and I think it's also interesting for the investors that are on the call as well. Um, I mean, this whole, this whole thing has been really, really amazing uh, for everybody. So we hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Yes, definitely. Um, now it is time for us um, to dive in. Um, 
Yeah, so to our prizes, firstly, we would like to, you know, thank our wonderful prize partners, Adelo, um, Bubble, um, the Nigerian Trade and Investment Summit, Kedap World, Aim Corporation, and Techidia Institute for, you know, giving us the, the opportunity to be able to give and reward some of these really incredible entrepreneurs, right? So thank you, everyone. Thanks to you. So now we go to the first prize. So we have um, five scholarships to the Takedia Institute Mini NBA. And uh, the winners of the scholarships are Blue Sands Academy, Lali Farms, Farms to Shelf, Eric Health Services, and Blake Lee. And we move on to access to international payment infrastructure, Sarah Kasim. So another five scholarship to Takedia Institute Mini NBA program by awarded by Takedia Institute itself. We have Pearl Recycling, Legs of Pearl, The Safety Chick, Uganics Repellent, Africa Things. Next to the other list of prizes. So we have a wonderful prize here for my stash. So my stash will be attending the Nigerian Trade and Investment Summit in the United Kingdom. The prizes include return air ticket from Nigeria, one week accommodation and visa application support. And we also go to a six months of Adela Pro um, use and three by one hour workshop that goes to data technologies, data girls technology. Another prize go to the bubble boot go to Macomban, um, which will be from the bubble boot camp, sit for for four sessions for two hours. Thank you very much for all of you incredibly uh, incredible supporters of these prizes. We really, really appreciate you. And we do thank all of the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, whoever you are that have been privileged to be one of the winners of this prize. Do not worry, we'll send you a follow-up email. Over to you, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, CD. And again, thank you to our amazing prize sponsors. Um, this is, you know, something that we really are happy to be able to provide um, continued growth uh, to these companies through the mini MBA, through the trip to the UK, um, and also usage of Bubble and Adalo, which are these no-code, low-code tools, which is one of the concepts that we really focused a lot on uh, during this program that, you know, if you want to create some sort of te technological component for your company in order to be able to expand and grow further, it's not necessary to have a coder. You can really do it on your own using these tools. Um, so we're super excited about that. Um, before we go into listing off which are the companies that will be joining us for the next phase of this program, I do want to mention that all 99 companies that went through this acceleration program will be receiving a perks package of up to 10,000 uh, US dollars um, in tools. So tools like uh, AirMeets is one of them, Airtable, HubSpot, uh, there's a bunch of different tools that are our Safim and Seedstars partners that all companies that go through our programs will be getting. Um, again, don't worry, we will email all of you with the information on that perks package um, and also email all of the prize winners. Um, so this is a really hard part because I want to continue working with all 99 of you. Um, it was a really long, tough decision that went in from, you know, a bunch of different investment analysts, uh, investor opinions, and also taken into, into consideration with the 15 different countries that we have represented here uh, in the program. So we really wanted to try and find the companies that are really moving into the next growth phase of their, their business, but also taking into consideration representation for um, many of the countries that we have um, in this batch. So I think now we are ready. And just so everybody remembers, what is the growth program? So the growth program is three months more of training uh, and capacity building. So it will include more training workshops, more really more focused on one-on-ones with mentors, and of course, uh, additional grant funding of up to 50,000 euros um, each for, for some of these companies. Um, 
And we are really, really, really excited to work with you. Um, but for those of you that are not moving on to the growth program, we're still here. We're still a WE4A community. We're still going to be connected on Slack and WhatsApp. And we're still going to be following up with you and helping you achieve your growth goals. Um, so, CD, I think without further ado, we That's can show great. the first slide. There are 30 companies that will be moving to the growth program. We have Paper Bags. We have Oriki. We have Loom Craft Chocolate, Nayamon Sokos, Kwanza Coco, Innovate Labs, MyStash, Cosmotive, Morocco Clean Stoves, and My Money are the first 10 that will be going to the growth program. Congratulations, ladies. We're super excited to work with you again. Let's see who the next 10 are. We have Happy Coffee, Finno Packaging, Dromedic, Farm Innovation, Farmio, Dilapad, Ecopads, Farmer Tribe, Farm on Wheels, and Chile Eye Group. I can't wait to work with all of you again. I'm so excited. And the last 10 that are going to the growth program. Africa Wealth Initiative, Plumby Whole Foods, Promain and Promain, Zaf Collections, Women Smiles Uganda, 360 Site, or the Smart Way to Be Better, Red Button, Store to Door, Eco Better, and Source My Gadgets. We are super, super, super thrilled to be able to work with all 30 of you again. Um, and, we, and we really look forward to seeing how all of your companies grow, not just the ones that are going into the growth program, but all of you have an extremely bright future. And we are so, so, so happy to see where you go. Wow, that was quite a quite a climax of a very long um, very long program. And we want to close this off and give you all an opportunity to network with these amazing entrepreneurs. Um, we're now moving into our networking session. Some of you have already seen it before, but CD, I'll let you explain what that looks like. Yes, I mean, before we just move on to the networking session, yeah. incredibly uh, incredible performance by all of the 99 entrepreneurs. So as we all have said, congratulations to all of you. You have done an amazing three months of hard work. We're here. We're still a community. Please reach out to every one of us and please be in touch with any one of us. And especially the really, really strong iron lady carrying this program and the weight of the program on her shoulders, um, Elizabeth. I feel like we should give you a round of applause, incredibly, uh, incredible work by everyone and incredible support. So yes, now we will, it's now time to go and chill a little bit in, and then have conversations and network with each other. Again, just as a reminder, we've already gone through this, to network with people, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one meeting, just go to your reception area or by, um, by clicking on my schedule, you can, you know, you can write up who you want to, um, what's, what's um, the name of the person that you want to um, schedule a call with, and then you can create a scheduled meeting with that person. Well, now, it doesn't mean that you will get an automatic meeting with that person. It depends on the person in, in turn to actually accept your meeting. But do not forget, you are still racking up points. So for you to actually be the winner, of our audience engagement prize, please ensure that you accept as many meetings as possible. But also you can hang out on the fluid space. I feel like that's where I, I get to do space walk, Liz, amongst <laughs> the stars, right? Feeling like a celebrity. <laughs> so let us go there, let us, let us have fun and congratulations to all of us. And I just want to say one more time, really thank you to all of the entrepreneurs for your hard work over these past three months. Um, this program would really have obviously not been possible without you. You've inspired all of us so much. Um, thank you to our wonderful prize sponsors uh, for really uh, adding value to this demo day. And thank you, extra big thank you. None of us would be here uh, without our funding and implementation partners, uh, the EU, OACPS, uh, the German Development Corporation, and also our implementation partners in GIZ and the Tony and the Melu Foundation. Um, we are really humbled to be amongst these amazing partners who are doing really great work um, in Africa and 
just super, super humbled and excited by all of the entrepreneurs here today. Um, looking forward to chatting with all of you on the fluid space and congratulations to all of the all of the winners. You're all winners anyways. Yeah, one more thing. Um, it is also an opportunity for you to actually go hang out into the boots of this amazing prize sponsors that we have. I mean, sure. if I were lucky to be one of the winners of any of the prizes, I would want to go um, automatically have conversations with the, the individual or the sponsor that is actually, um, that actually supported my prize. So Absolutely. let's get going. Absolutely. And sorry, one more thing. I have to say it. The team at Safim has been amazing. So really, thank you all, Safim team, CD, uh, Salmin, Alberta, Kaone, Harry, everybody else, Noel, behind the scenes. Um, it's been a real pleasure. So I'll speak to you all now on the Fluid Space. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. See you there. Bye-bye.